So let's go to introvert thinking. So that's a loss here. So ESFJs are emotionally driven and in experiencing life through changeable moods lack the coherence of formal thinking process. They could effortlessly move others on an emotional level. They have difficulty communicating with intelligible structure, sounding to others like a stream of consciousness or a word salad. Internally, the landscape of their minds can be similarly chaotic, lacking a sense of order or priority. They crave the clarity and insight of those who can refine the noise of factual information into elegant, coherent principles so that everything clicks together and makes sense. Such systems provide a sense of priority and meaning for them, enabling them not to only do what feels good, but also unambiguously correct. Yeah, that's true. Put me in a room full of NT users. I'm just going to be like, I will shut up. I'm not going to say anything because I feel just inferior towards those who speak intellectually. So I'll just shut down and just maybe I'll speak last or not speak at all. And mm. I, have, I love talking about my feelings a lot. But I've learned to, when it comes to like my TI or thinking, I have to say it out loud privately. I'm like, you idiot, you're not supposed to be doing that. You should have not said that to that person. When I have an outer dialogue to myself, I, and, I, and I kind of listen to what I'm saying, mm. then I'm, and I'm getting better at this, then it starts to make all sense. Because I would just go in full emotion and not think about it and just and then suffer the consequences afterwards. Right. Got it. I don't know if this is the case for you, because I know like we recently met, but like when I meet ESFJs, a lot of them are kind of scatterbrained when they go about yes. the world. Is that you too? <laughs> scatterbrained as in when it comes to my routine, I'm not scatterbrained. You right. tell me, I'll tell you everything that I do. But if you tell me things about the world and how I see things, I'll jump, I'll almost jump sides. And somebody is like, what side are you on? What are you talking about? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just trying to think, <laughs> figuring things out. So that's where it's, it's scatterbrained. When new things come to me that my SI doesn't like, then I'll kind of like come up with my own conclusions. But right. if it's something I'm familiar with, most likely I'll stick to my to my gut and my point. Got it. Uh huh. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you're not limited by the structure too. Hey guys, if you find yourself getting stuck with really difficult emotions, I have created a video about how you get from inner emotional pain to inner peace in five steps. If you want to check out that video, I have a link to that video down below in the description box and also up above as well. Another thing is, like, do you feel like you like people to help you kind of make sense of things or provide a sense of clarity? Sometimes when I talk with ESFJs, they like to ask questions. They want to understand um, how things work, for instance. like they Yeah, because I don't want to come across feeling stupid. The worst thing for me is to feel like I'm incompetent or unable. So I will ask questions like, okay, so can you tell me step by step how to do this so that I get this right? And I'm not going to make them feel bad that I did it wrong. And it's always the fear of them rejecting me or just being socially unacceptable. That's the really the bottom line of where it comes from. So yeah, mm. you're right. Got it. So let's go to ideas. Ideas is expert intuition. ESFJs, they love to increase people's enjoyment and satisfaction in the present. However, they will find that they can further elevate their interactions with others by finding ways to instill a sense of wonder at the many intriguing possibilities the world has to offer. Although uh, they may come across as direct and action-oriented, their aspirations lie in being able to speculate about alternative viewpoints and when they feel confident in themselves will begin to display great curiosity in the different mysteries of life waiting to be uncovered. Yep. I have two perfect examples for this, and I'll keep it short. The first one is with astrology. I have a way of coming up with these NE ideas and then putting it into astrology, structuring it. So if you watch my channels, many people will say, I never thought of it that way, or, whoa, that's such a cool concept. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just putting all of the SI and NE things together, and this is what I thought of. Now, when it comes to teaching, if a student is struggling to learn, let's say, a simple concept, I will use the NE to be like, okay, it's kind of like this. Picture you're doing this, and I will use lots of analogies and metaphors mm -hmm. to put my to make my point across, coming up with my NE ideas. You're using expert intuition in support of expert feeling because you want people to have fun and enjoy your stimulating their, their interest and curiosity. Yeah, it's almost, I, I do care about what other people think. I know most. My, most people don't. They're like, 
If they don't like it, I don't care. I actually care a lot because I don't want, again, what I don't want to come across incompetent or just shallow. I want my ideas to make you feel good. And it's also something that makes sense. That that doesn't make me look like I'm just making it up. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful. They love brainstorming. You mentioned about this in groups of people promoting the free and open exchange of ideas while making their environment inclusive of a diverse array of opinions. In this way, the newness and possibilities is coupled with a communal enthusiasm for novelty and a desire to explore a multifaceted reality together. Exactly. That makes complete sense. With my students, I always come up with ideas so that they won't... My, my, I'm all about stabilizing. I come up with new ways to make sure that they will always be stabilized because the novelty will eventually wear off. The methods I'm using for my students, they'll eventually catch on and think, oh, he's doing this thing again. So I got to think of another backup plan and uh, E with my FE to counter it always, like two steps ahead. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah, again, another extra intuition, support of extra feeling kind yeah. of thing here. At their best, ESFJs may come across to others as interesting and unique, able to expose them people to things they have never thought of before rather than just regular entertainers. You mentioned about that in regards to teaching. Mm -hmm. However, this acquired skill has its limits with them lacking the depth of interpretation seen with a natural. Uh, because of this, the lateral perspectives they introduce may turn out to be more trite than truly profound. Exactly. Yeah, very true. So it might not always be like it won't be as profound as a TI user or an, or a TE user would come up with, but at least it works for the moment until it doesn't yeah. anymore. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So here's uh, the next one: relations. Relations is introverted feeling. So with yeah. their overwhelming focus on the emotional atmosphere around them, ESFJs are inclined to suppress personal attitudes that are unhelpful to the mood they wish to create in other people especially if these are more negative or judgmental rather than supportive and welcoming. And this could cause them to maintain a public face of jollity, even when not feeling right inside, or else they may remove themselves from public view until they feel more collected. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very true. With um, I, I'm not the type of person, FI, that likes to look for who I am or search for who I am. I'm always the, like the dreamer. I like to think, oh, what if, what would it be like if I was like this? What would it be like if I was like that? So I know a lot of like, for example, ISFPs that I work with, they just know what they like and what they don't like. As for myself, I don't know that sometimes. I'm just like, oh, I could like that. Or I could like this person. Who knows? So <laughs> when it comes to FI, <laughs> yeah, like I, it's so, sometimes I don't know what I want. And I just conform to what other people will say or go with. And then at the end, I'm like, oh man, what did I get myself into? Why did I join that group? Why did I why did I see <laughs> that to that person? Why did I commit to this when I didn't really like it? I was just thinking, oh, that seems nice. So I really need to learn to FI things a lot more than just I need to care about myself more than other people's as I and it's getting better as I get older. Yeah. So it kind of catches up to you later. Right. Yeah, it really does. And it's especially now that I'm in my 40s, believe it or not, I'm, I'm, I just turned 40. But I can see that where areas where I'm like, yeah, I could have avoided lots of problems by not doing this, by not meeting this person, by not saying this. So I just I have lots more of regrets, but I don't look, I don't hold on to them. I just right. move on. Well, yeah, I, it's interesting because I'm going in an opposite direction because sometimes I like I check in too much with myself. So like I say, oh, I wish I was a bit like friendlier there, or more inclusive, that that kind of stuff. And I'm getting better at it <laughs> too. <laughs> so it, it, kind of, it goes the other way around for me. So instead of keeping favorites or enemies, they want everyone to be included together and tend to be non-professional in their behavior. Assuming they are not in the throes of anger, they will try to be warm to people, even those they may personally dislike. And simultaneously, they may not commit all their attention to their nearest and dearest in case that limits their interactions with a broader group. But despite this, they're aware of personal attitudes and sensitivities capable of mining them in others so that they are unlikely to unintentionally cross boundaries and cause unwanted stir. Additionally, they refer re reserve enough awareness of their own attitudes that their expressions are seen to come from a sincere, believable place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
Sometimes I have friends. A lot of people will say, why are you still friends with that person? Or you're the only person that can stand this person. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I'm, I don't want to admit it because I don't want to hurt their feelings. But it's true. Like, there's, I'm too friendly sometimes. I'm learning to get better at it. I've learned to say, no, I cannot help you with this. Or no, I cannot attend this event because I'm very tired. Because before, when I was younger, I'd just say, yeah, sure. And I would have 17,000 responsibilities and 15,000 events I had to attend. Then I realized I'm tired. I'm burnt out. I need time for myself. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, interesting. Like, Yeah, again, it, it kind of catches up to you later. Just like uh, extra feeling catches up to me. I was actually uh, wanting to talk with Yusuf J about like her hanging out with this particular person who causes a lot of trouble. But it's interesting because I saw with her like, it seems like no matter if people get into conflict with her or not, eventually they always come back into her fold. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. like I have a lot of I have I have a lot of friends, not friends, but acquaintances where people just hate them, and they're like, I can't believe you have her on Facebook. I can't believe that this person has followed you. And I'm like, I I don't keep track of those things. That's great, I guess, but yeah, they just I get along with most people, but on a very it takes a while for me to get very deep and intimate with someone. I don't let people get too close unless they really understand my TI and right. all these things about me that's like broken about me. Then I'm really invested in that person. Right. Yeah. There's still like this element of who belongs in my close friend group too. Okay. Yeah. I have very like maybe three or four best friends, I guess in the term best friend, but I have many acquaintances. Like you look at my facebook there's like almost three thousand people there that have friended me and i'm like i don't even know most of these people but i'm happy you friended me and <laughs> it's true it's just and only like three or four are like my very close friends and right. yeah and we have uh, pope francis coming up here at the at the end so uh force <laughs> um so this is expert sensing yeah so this is uh esfj's hidden strength is that they're highly energetic proactive individuals who could fill up the room with the presence easily commanding attention. With a keen <laughs> awareness for everything going on around them, they can make things happen in the way they want them to. Because of this, they make effective leaders in social situations and easily assume the role of ringmaster once they see people they can see people to entertain. Yeah, that's very that's interesting. Yes. I actually relate to that a lot because for example, if I'm in a party and I know it's time to go or the party is done. If I get up and start doing things, there's like some, some, everyone kind of follows my lead or like everyone's like, okay, good. I'm glad you got up because I was waiting to leave. I'm like, oh, I just, I thought it was the right time. <laughs> or if I'm in a staff room and I'm sitting by myself, people come to me naturally. But if I get up, then people get up too. It's like, <laughs> like yeah, I don't mean to come across as having a presence, but I just, People have told me that. It's like, well, when you walk in, it's like we have to say, who's that guy? And I'm like, it's just me. <laughs> and it's nobody else. But it's very strange how it turns and, out that way. Yeah. For me, it's the opposite. I could like sneak in and sneak away. <laughs> I, wish I, could, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, there's, that's why I just, stay, I just stay by myself or go to a different classroom that's empty if I, if I need that to happen. Yeah. Or right. even in parties, I'll just not attend. Because I know if I, for example, they will text me saying, why weren't you there? We were expecting you there or you didn't show up. So the party sucked. And I'm like, it's not just me. It's you guys can make it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to tip my own horn, but it's, it just comes across that way. So it's weird. They dislike conflict and disharmony, putting much of their energy in keeping the peace between people and reducing tension in favor of safe, friendly relationships. They do not seek to control the environment around them for their its own sake and place a lot of value in being the boss preferring to be a facilitator and enabler of joy. Yeah. Like when there's staff meetings and we have to, let's say, present something in smaller groups, I will never volunteer and say, okay, I'll, I'll present for our group. Never. I will, unless I'm asked to do it, like if it's the last resort. That's why I don't like to be in those leadership responsibility roles, but give me something to do and I'll do it well and delegate well if, if it involves that. So as long as I'm not the one starting it. Right. You have like yeah. ESTP started. <laughs> yeah, ESTP, ESTJs, um, ENTJs, 
And yeah, like those are the ones that starts all those things. Now, nevertheless, their tireless energy, alertness, decisiveness, and physical physicality effortlessly effortlessly cause others to go along with initiatives and ESFJs that have has taken a hit to their confidence may resort to more forceful authoritarian tactics with people, as this is something they feel confident enough in to fall back on, even if they do not enjoy it. Despite yeah. this, yeah, you experience you can identify. With my students, I, for example, I work with a lot of um, children with behavioral, and I find them, they're like in the ENFP, ESTP spectrum, or sometimes INFP or INFJ. So when they're doing something that's just morally wrong, like he would say things like, well, I felt like punching him. Yeah, but why would you punch him? You know that's wrong. That's going to get you in trouble, and you're going to lose your iPad time. So this this fatherly, motherly thing comes out of me. I'm like, no, that's wrong. You need to like have consequences and too bad, so sad. So there's a part of me that comes out assertive, not aggressive, where if I find that it's it not breaks the law, but it's not tradition, it's not conventional, then you will really hear from me, but not aggressive. You'll just be like, Well, he's he's not happy. He's just he's very disappointed in you, kind of thing. Uh, did you find it easy to carry out the consequences or not? My consequences or other people's consequences? Like, yeah, if, so, if someone does something and uh, in order to like punish them, for example, do you find it easy? Um, or no? Yes, if it was if, if it was someone that knows very well that it's wrong, like for example, if this person keeps going back to the same boyfriend that keeps abusing them, I'm like, why? You know what's gonna happen. You need to get out of this relationship and cut that off and so i will especially if i know that it's a repeated pattern my si my fe has measured this so many times then i'll be like i have to say something but if it's something that's new i'll be like oh i'm not going to say anything because i want to make sure that we're still in good terms mm -hmm. but if we, we become better terms like good friends and i notice a bad pattern or not bad but i guess the word is unusual or harmful pattern then i'll say you need to stop doing this these are the reasons why I will SI everything and then cut it off from the roots. Mm. Yeah. That's like my teacher in me coming out. Like sometimes students will say, whoa, I've never seen that. I would I have like a bark when I order someone and in, in school, especially like they just know when I'm not happy and they will listen usually most of the time. Got it. <laughs> so this, uh, despite this, ESFJs will most likely try to downplay their innate assertiveness coming across instead as friendly and easygoing to others so they could feel as safe and at ease as possible. On rare occasions, they lose their temper. Their rage can be terrifying and few will have the courage to resist. Yeah, exactly. If it's just morally wrong and it's just, because you know, there's there's one thing, it's to be right or to be true. A lot of ST or ST to thinkers want things to be true but I like things to be right. So if it's not true and it's not right, then I'm going to say something. And I'm going to be like, okay, you don't make any sense and you have no values and whatever you're saying. And I sound like an ESTJ right now because I, I'm, I'm so passionate about the things that people shouldn't be doing, you know, if it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo, thank you so much for doing this interview. Very much appreciate it. We're going to put Ricardo's YouTube channel down below in the des description box. Be sure to check it out. He's such an eloquent speaker and he's super entertaining. So I definitely recommend it. So thank you so much, Ricardo. And thank you, Leon, for hosting. You've been a lovely host and I look forward to your videos as well. And I had a great time answering questions. Hopefully, if there's anything in the comment section you want me to answer, just comment down or ask Leon. Both of us yes. will try to answer and work things out. Thank right. you. Right. And that's a great compliment from a ESFJ to say I'm a good host. What? <laughs> <laughs>